if you're a fan of the Lego games and a fan of Harry Potter, then you'll be happy to hear that a brilliant marriage of these two worlds has come about in the latest Lego game, Lego Harry Potter Years 1 to 4. <laughs> It's available across all platforms, but we review the 360 version, and I think this might actually be my favourite LEGO game to date, Trent. Yeah, definitely, Hex. I mean, I love the Harry Potter movies, but there are a lot of them, which is great that they've decided to break the games up. So the first game will cover the first four years, so we can expect another game to wrap up the story. Yeah, and it was a great recap, too, because it's been ages since I've seen the movies, or, or read the books for that yeah. matter, so I could kind of go back and, and relive those moments of Harry, Hermione and Ron and their first couple of years at Hogwarts the Quidditch matches, learning spells, it's all there. The game starts exactly where the books and film do. Harry is left in the doorstep of his muggle home and years later he is sent for to attend Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Hagrid is there to lead you from the Leaky Cauldron to Diagon Alley and of course the Goblin takes you to Gringotts Bank where your inherited fortune has been stored. Now there's no actual dialogue in LEGO games, it just sounds and gestures, but nevertheless the cutscenes mirror the films almost exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, almost. There are a few signature Lego additions to it. Yeah, those are great. They're always good fun and they add that signature Lego stamp to the game. Once you're at Hogwarts, one of the first spells you'll learn is Wingardium Leviosa, which will be the spell you probably use the most throughout the game. It allows you to levitate objects, create stairs, assemble items in mid-air, or lift one another to higher platform areas. Although I think you and I, Hex, got into a few too many magical battles in co-op when we were supposed to be focusing on finishing the story. Hmm. I love those little cars in the Weasley Garden, they were great. You know, I think I enjoyed this game most when we played it in co-op. You know, it's all about using the right spell to find a hidden platform or the right potion ingredient, and it's so much more fun when we're working together. You will find, though, that you don't have all the spells immediately to unlock all the goodies available. <sighs> So frustrating trying to unlock when you see something twinkling and you don't have the right spell to unlock it or see what's behind it yet. Yeah, oh. it does mean though that when you go through that area again, because you will go through certain areas a few times, there's always more for you to do there because you pick up new spells as you go. After completing each level, you unlock free play mode, so if you want to go back and collect every last stud or shield piece, you can. Harry is the only one who can really navigate a broomstick well, whereas Hermione is good with book puzzles and Ron can turn into his rat, Scabbers, which is extremely handy in getting into those hard to reach places. Along the way, you can also help out the odd student in peril and you'll be doing a lot of zapping of just about everything around you to collect studs, additional lives and just general loot. And I have to say that did get a bit tedious after a while, you know, zapping everything around you just to collect studs. It got to a point where I would just go into a room and enter a sort of zapping frenzy, zapping in all directions without even thinking because uh, half the time the item I needed was just hidden behind a plant or a banner or something. Sounds like my kind of game. Well, yeah, but there just wasn't a whole lot of strategy to it. Yeah, I agree. Those studs are the kind of thing you don't really need to worry about unless you're the I need to get every little item out of the game kind of people. They're called completists, Trem, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, they're just not necessary, Daz. They're just extra points. See, you need to stay committed to the game in searching the little puzzles and finding the potions. Remember when we used the, the mandrake root with, to break the glass cabinet? Yeah, and... but first we had to get the earmuffs out of the wardrobe so that we wouldn't be affected yeah. by it. That was great. Yeah. But what was your verdict on LEGO Harry Potter All Up? Well, I thought it was great, Hex. I mean, I never really played a LEGO game before, but I must say I like how they interpreted the films. All the classic movie moments were there. I liked being able to switch and play all the different characters, and I liked interacting with the paintings on the staircases. I'm going to give it eight and a half rubber chickens. You know, I've come to expect certain things from LEGO games. Great gameplay, fun co-op and puzzles, but most importantly, they tell the story of the films in wonderful detail, and they've really done that here. Plus, it was great to see that co-op split-screen function again in LEGO Harry Potter. It's 8 out of 10 for me.